Hey guys, Nate Wable here in Mississippi Fly, where waterfowlers or kids can talk foul. I wanted to come to you today to kind of share some, uh, some of my trials and tribulations uh, that I've been through in my life. Uh, not so that you can judge me, so that you can understand why it is I do what I do. I was born in California in 1979 and lived there until the age of 13 or 14. My dad ended up transferring his job to Tennessee. And we up and left everything we knew, all our family and friends, and moved to Tennessee. Growing up in California was rough. You had to watch out for the gangs. You had to kind of watch out uh, and be street smart. Um, it, it, was, it was definitely difficult, but I was able to get through it and have a lot of great memories. Moving to Tennessee was a change of pace. It slowed down. Um, ended up making friends, blending in, and starting on the journey that I'm on now. Um, I ended up joining the military at the age of 18. Uh, ended up getting out of the military. I had some issues um, there. I was married and divorced. And then eventually when I got out, I was uh, had met somebody new and lived with them for three years. I decided as I was getting out that I wanted to be able to still serve, so I joined the National Guard. Being with that person for three years, I really felt that you know it was time to start fresh, time to start new. I did that. I had two beautiful children, as you can see behind me. They were 11 months apart and just like twins. Well, after moving closer to home, decided uh, closer to, to where my parents were in Tennessee, um, <clears throat> it's time once again to do what the Army needed me to do. I went on a small deployment. Um, it wasn't nothing big. It wasn't overseas, but it was down to the border to help secure the border. Um, with our nation's um, immigration problem. I really thought it was cool. I got to meet a lot of people, got to do a lot of cool things, got to work with Border Patrol. But upon my return, after being down there for, um, I believe it was four or five months, um, I decided that uh, it was time to go home, so I came home. And when I did, there was nobody there. Um, my house was empty, my family was gone. I hit a low in my life, not knowing what was going on. This has just come out of the blue. But as being a, a veteran in the military, you're always thinking the worst. You're always, you know, thinking, um, oh, my gosh, it's happened to me. And many of you guys out there that are vets, you know what I'm talking about. We see countless, countless times um, the Dear John letter, letters or Jody's got your wife and Jody's got your girlfriend. Um, and, yes, it finally hit me, an NCO, the person who was supposed to have everything taken care of and everything was supposed to be on the up and up well after finding out that she was gone and doing some investigation I found out that she had uh, apparently met somebody new who was not a very good positive person uh, this person um, had been to prison um, for methamphetamine and apparently somehow don't know how or when it started but she had gotten addicted to it um, When this situation happens, you're compelled to try to make it work, try to get that person help. But that person can only help themselves if they want to be helped. I didn't learn this the easy way. I learned it the hard way. After taking the person back, trying to play house, they leave again, only to leave me with two children. And then they come back, play house again, and leave again. This went on for a couple months, and my family told me that it wasn't healthy for my kids and that I needed to step up. But I felt that this was a covenant that I made before God through sickness and health that I needed to see it through. One day I was bamboozled about, here, Nathan's going to stay with you, my son, and my daughter, Allie, is going to come with me, and we're going to go get pizza and a movie, and we'll be right back. Right back never came. Sitting there, two, three, four hours go by, and no answer, no nothing. My son comes to me, and now he's worried. He wants to know where his biological mother and his sister are. I'm a father, and I have no clue. It was kind of hard. Time went on, and I realized they weren't coming back, so I called my family to come over and to help me with my son as I gathered my senses. My mom sat and prayed with me, but it just went in one ear and out the other. Eventually, time went on. I gathered my wits, started raising my son, 
Still not knowing where my daughter was. Well, I got a phone call one day and asked if I wanted to see her. I said yes. I talked the person into letting her stay the night. We ended up filing for emergency custody. I know it sounds dirty, but I had to do what I had to do at this point. The judge <clears throat> granted me emergency custody and we started this process where she had some visitation and I had visitation back and forth, back and forth we went, like so many other people out there. Well, to make a long story short, she had messed up and the judge caught wind of it. I was granted almost full custody. She had two hours on the weekend. Given her two hours on the weekend, I still wasn't comfortable, but I let him go anyway. Well, they never came home. Started looking, ended up realizing that their biological mother had stole a van. Come and pick them up and was headed to wherever she was headed. The van was found on the side of the road. The kids nor her were in there. Being panicked, I worried and I worried some more. I called local law enforcement. There was nothing they could do. It was a civil matter. They said, well, the car could just break down and she could just not want to be found. You need to take it up with the judge. Being the person I am, this didn't get me down. I called TBI and the local news media and then the local sheriff's department decided to step in once they were involved. Six days later, the U.S. Marshals, TBI, and local law enforcement found my kids locked in a closet covered in dog feces in a crack house. Ended up, she ended up going away um, and I ended up getting full custody. Still, after everything I'd been through, I still didn't understand the big picture. I started drinking heavily, trying to raise my kids, although my kids never seen me um, drunk, but I would drop them off at my parents' house and then go drink heavily and then come home, sleep it off, wake up and do it all over again. I met the woman of my dreams, my wife now. We dated for a few weeks and a few months, and then she realized those two children need a role model, and you're not being that role model. If you want to be with me, you need to straighten up and do what and do what's right. And I did. I haven't had a drop to this day. They ended up getting married, and my son there, Hunter, my stepson, was introduced to the family. Hunting. And sports started being a way me and him could bond. My other two, I kept them involved in sports and involved in things to try to give, get away from everything they had been through. Through all this, I was able to, to build a relationship with them until I broke my back. Once I broke my back, I hit a, lot, I hit a bottom. I no longer could work, no longer could do the things that I thought I could do, and I started to have to fight VA and everything else. Well... I had started the, the U thing when I recovered from my surgery with my back to try to help pass some time, maybe mentor to some kids um, about what it was, you know, some things that I went through and, and uh, how God has helped me. The U thing wasn't gaining much momentum and it was really taking up a lot of my, you know, time and and expenses since I couldn't work and my wife was doing everything she could to keep food on the table. Um, and so December came and it was December 5th, 2012. I accepted the Lord as my Lord and Savior and was baptized. And my wife decided to rededicate her life with me. And so I feel a calling to be able to preach to kids about things that they might be going through, about how God can work with them, and certainly how he's worked, worked through my life. Everything that I've been through, it couldn't have been accomplished without God. The safe return of my children, me being able to go on deployments and be safe, me being able to overcome drinking, and me being able to find the woman that has just been a light, that she's guided the way through her patience, her kindness, and her sincerity. And I want to pass this on to the kids out there who could be going through something or could be going through 
uh, a turbulent time in their life. You may not have nowhere to turn. And I want to be able to preach to them and tell them that, you know, there is somebody. You have me. You have Mississippi Flyway staff, people you can call, questions, and you have God. And God's going to work in your life in so many ways. And I, and I know it's hard because you're used to having somebody be right here and talk to them. But if you just close your eyes and you talk to them and you read your Bible and you study, it's going to happen. You're going to feel it. You're going to, you're going to feel it. And, and that the you thing that I've been doing has just started taking off. And, and I've tried to give up several times. My wife said, no, keep going. And, and we're gaining momentum and every day. And, and, you know, I keep working with kids and I, and I, and I've went with my church to talk at the, the boys home here in Tennessee and, and work with them. And, and God's really working, guys. And this is why I do what it is I do. So that I can show people that he has a plan and he has a reason. And his reason for me to keep going was so that I could preach to the youth. So that I could reach that one kid out there who, who's having some troubles and needs somebody. I coach baseball. I, I do so much. And I'm always all about the youth. I do, you know, we take kids hunting. And I and the whole time I'm out there, I'm talking to them, I'm trying to get inside and, and see what it is that, that may be bothering them or, or they can talk or even just building a relationship with them. And I have a few youth that call me from time to time and they're always asking me questions and, and that. And, and it's a way that I can stay in touch with them and, and keep, keep going and, and keep them pushing them in the right direction. You know, all these kids that I work with could be our next mayor, our next police officer, our next president. And by being able to mentor to them, and teach them, you know, about hunting and the outdoors and, and God, I feel that I'm instilling principles in them so that when they get to that level, they'll be able to instill those principles back into our country or our community or even their life itself. Please join me in this path that I'm on. Join me and God as we travel out and we try to reach kids and people. I didn't go to school to be a preacher. I'm just a washed up army guy who went out and served his country who had a broke back. But I feel every day that God's calling upon me to do something and this is it. This is what he's had me wanting me to do. So until next time, I'm Nathan Wable. We're Mississippi Fly, we're waterfowlers, we're kids talk foul. I hope you can join me in the field as we can spread the gospel and share all of our memories and our stories and our trials and tribunes with other youth across the flyway and across the nation. And if we can just reach one, two, or three, or maybe we can reach all of them, we're going to change things once and for all. Thank you. Have a great day, and God bless you.